Um, hi, everyone. So the aim of my presentation today is talking about how important it is to formulate considering non-starch polysaccharides, or if it's important or not. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to AgriFutures for funding this project. And also thank you to Moman, who is the research assistant on this project. And a big thank you to Inghams for their involvement in this project, particularly Ryan, who was involved in um, the planning of the trials and formulating the diets, and also Todd, who was involved in formulating the diets. So there's been a lot of research into non-starch polysaccharides, looking at their benefits and detriments. We know that they have an impact on things like viscosity, nutrient utilization, litter quality, um, as well as bird behavior, etc. Um, but we still, and we're using N NSP degrading enzymes a lot in diets, so particularly xylanase, but we're still not considering non-starch polysaccharides when we're formulating feed. And there's a number of reasons for this. Mainly at the moment, we don't know what the optimum levels and what values we should be using for formulating with based on economics, welfare, um, bird performance. We also, the methods that we're using to analyze NSP um, are very time consuming and expensive. So it's not something that we can regularly analyze in feed. And also NSPs have very complex structures and they vary a lot between different ingredients. Um, so their impact in the gut env environment varies a lot depending on their structure and how complex their chemistry is. Which means it's very difficult for us to predict what NSP levels we should formulate to and what impact they're gonna have. So in order to answer how important it is to formulate with NSPs, we first needed to know what sort of levels we're feeding at the moment in our commercial diets and how much variation there is between different commercial diets. So to do this, I collected 150 diets from across Australia, um, 30 samples from each different phase, including breeder diets, and at least five diets from each state in Australia per phase. And I literally just measured the soluble and insoluble NSP levels in them. Um, and the reason, just to reiterate why it's important to look at both the water soluble and water insoluble levels, is that they have very different properties. So we can't just measure the total NSP level. And they both have their good points and their bad points. So soluble NSP, we obviously associate mainly with viscosity and the impact that this has on reducing enzyme accessibility to the ingredients, reduces their ability to be absorbed through the gut wall. Um, but they have beneficial impacts in that they are utilized by our beneficial flora. So the beneficial microbiota can ferment them and use them. And also soluble NSP can change the gut environment. So it can change, for example, the pH, which makes the environment unfavorable for our pathogenic bacteria. Same with our insoluble, they have good and bad points. So insoluble NSP acts as a nutrient diluent and a physical barrier to enzymes. Um, so it can reduce digestion, but also the presence of insoluble fiber can help stimulate the gizzard function and it can have an impact on retention, so it can improve the amount of hydrochloric acid and enzymes that are accessing the substrates. And it also can reduce how fast passage rate is, which improves how well nutrients can be absorbed. So it's important that we measure both. And what I wanted you to gauge from this table is how much variation there is between diets and their NSP content. So these are all Australian diets, and yeah, we're seeing a lot of difference between the diets. And I'd also like to say here, thank you to everyone that gave me feed, diet, feed samples for this. This is where they ended up. So then what we did is we took the diets that Ingham's had provided us. So these were commercial feed samples and we correlated them directly with the FCR data from the commercial birds that had been fed these diets. And what was super interesting is that there was really strong correlations between the insoluble NSP level and the FCR in the birds. So 
what's interesting about this is usually we're not even considering NSP at all, but if we are, we're mainly focused on the soluble NSP because of our viscosity and our litter quality effects. But this shows that insoluble is actually very important in all phases. So we found significant strong correlations in all phases. And also in the finisher phase, there was correlations between the soluble NSP and the FCR values. So from this, we'd established that it looks like NSP is important um, on performance. So then we wanted to examine it in a commercial setting, what the relationship between performance and NSP level is. So here, Ryan formulated diets for us. So um, these are commercial type diets. So that's specifically why we wanted Ryan to do them. And they were barley, corn, sorghum, and wheat based. And what we were aiming for was to keep the protein and the energy levels as identical as possible and just change the NSP. So we focused on the soluble NSP because we were particularly interested in litter quality. So we formulated the diets to have high, low, and medium soluble NSP levels, but as similar as possible protein levels. This resulted in 12 dietary treatments, and we had nine replicates per diet and 10 birds per replicate. And all the diets had xylanase and phytase in at commercial levels. And we fed them as four phases from day zero to 42. I'm just presenting here the um, results where we had significant interactions between the grains and the NSP level. And what we found really interesting was that the barley diet with the low soluble NSP level had the best FCR in the, both the grower and finisher phase. So this is interesting because usually we don't really focus, we don't really want to use barley too much because we worry about the NSP content, particularly the beta-glucans in it. But this showed that um, these diets had 15% barley in without any beta-glucanase and their performance was equal or better to our wheat and corn-based diets. Um, our, wheat, our corn and sorghum based diets with the low NSP, soluble NSP level, had the worst performance and lowest dry matter content in the litter in the grower phase. So if we directly compared our low corn and sorghum diets with our low barley diets, they had pretty much identical soluble NSP levels in the grower phase, so about 20 grams per kilogram. But in the starter phase, the barley diets had quite a bit more soluble NSP. So they had about five grams per kilogram more soluble NSP compared to the corn and sorghum ones. So this suggests to us that it's pretty important that young birds get enough soluble NSP because it seems to prime their microbiota so that when they're older, they can use the dietary fiber better. Um, and as predicted, our litter moisture content was highest when we fed our barley diet with high soluble NSP content. But what's interesting here is we've got three barley diets that all had pretty much the same protein levels. They had the same performance, so there's no difference in performance, but we were seeing difference in litter dry matter content. So this shows that when we're formulating, we, shouldn't, we should also be trying to predict what our litter quality results might show, not just our performance results. So we know that phytase and xylanase are pretty much in every poultry diet now, but, and there's a lot more focus now on using beta-glucanase, but there's quite a lot of NSP degrading enzymes that are maybe being underutilized. And also we're putting in xylanase with the aim of trying to eliminate problems with viscosity and litter quality. But at the moment, there's a lot more interest in how when we're crunching up our xylan, using our xylanases, we're getting these short chain oligosaccharides that have prebiotic properties. So that's a pretty hot topic at the moment. So we were interested to see if we could get extra effects of using xylanase if we fed double doses of xylanase or if we put xylanase with other NSP enzymes and made a cocktail. So we took our medium diets from trial one and we fed them with single xylanase, double xylanase, or a cocktail that I just made here that had xylanase, beta-glucanase, cellulase, pectinase, melanase, lactinase, and arabinofuridase in. Same idea, 12 diets, nine replicates, 10 birds for replicate, and all the diets had phytase in. 
And we found that in the young birds, so our day zero to 12 birds, that um, our double if we added double xylanase to the corn-based diet, it was it improved performance. So our best, our ultimate best diet was our wheat with cocktail. And our corn, that was significantly better than any of our corn diets, regardless of what enzymes they are having in. But if we added double xylanase to corn, we could make it comparable to all the other diets. Whereas corn with just single xylanase or the cocktail was, wasn't comparable to barley, sorghum or the wheat-based diets. Um, and we also found that the double xylanase improved um, FCR in our, so double xylanase and cocktail improved our FCR in our day zero to 23 birds. And having double xylanase also improved our excreta dry matter at day 35. So this suggests that it was beneficial to use double xylanase and in some cases to also use a cocktail, particularly in a wheat-based diet. Um, so following on from this, we're doing a lot of analysis looking at how different ages we um, respond to these enzyme treatments and to the different NSP compositions. So we're taking a lot of samples from, we've taken them from different phases and are doing a lot of analysis to look at age effects. And I'm also doing some in vitro work at the moment, looking at xyloligosaccharide production, either with single xylanase, double xylanase, or xylanase in combination with different enzymes to see if we can improve our xyloligosaccharide production and the prebiotic effects that come with that. So the take home message from this was that it seems pretty important to feed soluble NSP, especially to young birds. And what the main big message is that even though your diets have, may have the same protein and energy level, it doesn't mean that the NSP levels are going to be the same. And that can have a big impact on nutrient digestibility, viscosity, gut health, lots of different factors. So yeah, it's important from, based on this research, it suggests it's important to also be looking at your NSP content and it's not just the crude fiber values. Um, it seems that we need more focus on insoluble NSP, not just the soluble NSP, as which we've mainly been focusing on. Um, like I said, even though you, performance might be the same, it doesn't mean your excreta and your litter dry matter will be the same, even though the diet seems similar. We could potentially be using barley more if we make sure that we keep the NSP level low. And it seems that double doses of xylanase and NSP cocktails can have advantages over feeding single xylanase. So our next steps in this project is we were hoping that we would be able to determine the range of soluble NSP levels to formulate to, but because of how we designed our studies where we wanted to keep the protein levels the same, we couldn't push the NSPs too far. So we'd like to look more at feeding more extreme different levels of NSP. And we're also interested in batch variability. So for example, if you had a bunch of different wheats with the same protein level, but they had different NSP levels, what sort of effects would you get? So thank you very much. And thank you very much again to AgriFutures and EAMS for their involvement in this project.